Welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with me, your host, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. And today I am so excited to have my new friend, I feel like my new best friend, spiritual visionary Kirk Nielsen on the show. So let me give you a little information about Kirk. Kirk incarnated at this time to be of service with the planetary shift to fourth density, beam light, love unconditionally, and do his best to be a positive example and high vibration to the world. He was born in Utah and raised in the Mormon church. He left the church in his early 20s in search of philosophies he resonated with. He has studied numerous new age, spiritual, and channeled authors and teachers. He has attended a myriad of personal growth workshops, retreats, and events. He currently helps lead spiritual retreats with his daughter, Bridget. And about 10 years ago, he had the opportunity to meet his hybrid children. So we're going to just touch on that a little bit. Um, his worldly skills include residential and commercial builder and developer, software developer, entrepreneur, and business owner. And he currently resides in Sedona, Arizona. So welcome, Kirk. Thank you. Welcome. Hi. Hi. So much to talk about with you. So when we first met, um, I think we were we had a conversation for about an hour and a half, and it could have gone on a lot longer. But I wanted to hopefully save some of it for the show. And then, you know, there's so much that maybe we'll have you on again. But I I want people to understand first how you made that transition going from the Mormon church to your spiritual journey of studying more new age spiritual teachers and channelers and things of that nature. Yeah, I guess that's kind of interesting, huh? Well, I mean, some people came from that background or maybe you're still on the fringe of that background. You know, I, I kind of think that I would just throw it all into like kind of the same thing, any kind of a, more rigidly structured kind of environment to a more open, more free spirit is free thinking environment. Really, that's kind of the shift if you want to generalize it. And that is interesting, people shifting that way because the whole world is needing to shift that way or they're going to go the other way. Right. So, so it, it is relevant in that way for sure. But yeah. Yeah. As for, as for that transition for me, so I was raised you know, in the Mormon church, uh, you know, just traditional in Salt Lake City. And um, then, you know, by the time that I got, uh, you know, 20 years old, it, it was just really obvious to me that uh, that wasn't, um, it, did, it didn't add up. I guess my biggest thing about the whole organized religion thing is, is if you start asking too many questions, they'll say, well, just, you know, you can't ask those questions. And then it'll be like, uh, or, um, just take it on faith that you don't need to know that. And I'm like, I, I'm going to need to know that. I'm going to, it's all going to have to make sense to me. And if you can't make it make sense to me, then, you know, it, 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 I can't stay with it. And of course, the biggest thing that doesn't make sense would be, look, we're the only right way and everybody else isn't. And if you don't do it our way, you're out. Right. We're talking for eternity. Yeah. I'm like going, really? I don't think a benevolent God or omnipotent God or whatever you want to call it being a loving being would ever set up a system like that. And he's the one that created us to choose to not be part of the system. I don't think so. Let's, <laughs> let's create a system where I'm like, everything I create actually gets themselves out of my presence. It's like, I don't think so. None of it adds up. It doesn't make sense. I think I think we're all okay. I think we're all part of the one. I think we're all part of you know the same one uh, infinite intelligence, and and uh, you know it's just a matter of recognizing that and realizing it. Yeah. So then, what what was the first I guess fork in the road that you took when you decided to leave the Mormon Church? Who did you get introduced to first or what teachings did you start? Well, you know, that was a long time ago. Um, but, uh, you know, for me then, I think probably the first thing I, I, I ran into, well, I just read the Bible. Okay. I don't know if you've ever done that before. Not for the cover. <laughs> like, you know, read it all the way through. And, you know, and, and this was the problem is, is I went on the Mormon mission for two years. 
mm-hmm. didn't have anything to do but you know go out and knock on doors and try to get people to join the Mormon church right but the whole time you know part of the the, the structure there is that like they believed in the bible and i go well then i can read this book you know so i did and if you do, then there's a bunch of stuff in there that is really like like eye opening. I mean, especially in the New Testament. I mean, Jesus is really this like amazing guy. I mean, he 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 was the real deal. He really lived, you know, walked his walk and lived his talk. You know, I mean, what he said, he did, and it was absolutely inspiring and incredible, and uh, just just amazing. So. To me, I was like, well, be like Christ. But then when I would look over into the religion, I would be like, it's not that way. And they're not doing the things that he actually says, which is accepting everybody. And everybody has a place in my house. I mean, on and on. I can go after scripture after scripture going, it goes directly against the teachings of the actual organization. Yeah. And they're they're saying, believe in this. Well, and that's been one of my biggest issues with, I think, most of organized religion and Christianity uh, because it is so dogmatic. And they're not practicing necessarily what they're preaching. Yeah. Like if you were going to be Christ-like, you would be helping out everybody and you would be doing your very best to be the best person you could possibly be. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, really the thing is, is like Christ consciousness, which is is like unconditional love and acceptance. And then freedom to l- allow everyone to be whoever they want to be without any condition. Yeah. Now that's a tall order in our polarized society, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. See, now they're not allowing that in society. So you can see they're directly in opposition to what I just said. Yeah. But if you're going to go with like God who would set up something, it would be like freedom. Freedom is the, the, the first attribute of like God because God gets to choose whatever he wants. Right. right. And if we're all a part of God, made of God, we are God, then we would get to freedom to choose. And anybody that would do opposition to that, now the only the, the only caveat there would be, and not harm someone else in the process. Yeah. See, those are the two pieces that you need to have. Like, I get to do what I want, but not harm anything or anyone else. So, oh, let me just go cut down a bunch of forests and, you know, plant, you know, a bunch of, I don't know, things that aren't very sustainable. It's like, well, that that's not helping the, land, the the earth, the forest, other people, you know, it's just like anything that would be unsustainable, unenvironmental. But, you know, you would have to at some times then say, well, you know, maybe I need to do some things for the good of the whole and some, some things are going to have to suffer. So you just do your best, you know? Of course. And that, you know, we're earthlings, earth humans, yeah. <laughs> still trying to figure it out. And some of us, I figured it out just a little more on the scale, but we're still here. So we haven't. But the the whole point is, is if you have these fundamental key precepts or morals or values, whatever you want to call these things, belief systems in place, you can guide your whole civilization. Literally with those, those ideas right there, you can guide this whole civilization. What would be in the best interest of yourself and the group? And the group includes the planet and the plants and the animals and everything. Yes. Not just people. Yes. So the best in the, in, uh, 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 of, of yourself and the best for the group or, or everything involved. And then you just use that as your guide. And I mean, then, then you're in business. Yeah. So obviously almost every decision that you see on the news is not uh, adhering to those standards. No, it's not. <laughs> and just looking around at how people are acting with each other. Yeah. 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 So, so that's all you have to do. And uh, I remember when I was like really getting into like sustainable communities and, you know, really excited about that and still am, I'm still into it, but it's like kind of impossible to get them to go now these all these restrictions and stuff. But the, the, well, the one thing is I always thought, well, now whatever decision that you make, you got to make it work for like 7 billion people. Mm. Oh, well, I'm going to eat these, you know, grass red cow, got get grass fed cows. You know, we're going to be really sustainable. Just do a little, Quick math, and you go, oh, well, that will sustain maybe, you know, a billion people, not seven. So can't do that. It's not going to work. You know, going to do this. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to only produce this much trash. Well, that's not going to work for seven billion people. You know, I mean, this is like the whole thing. You just keep keep throwing it out, throw it out. And there was very little that you could do. I mean, you really had to go a long ways to make it work for everybody. And so what did you find that could actually work for seven billion people? Well, it's going to be mostly plant-based diets. I mean, there's no freaking way you can like feed an animal and then eat the animal because it's taking eight times more food and resources and water and everything. I mean, can't do it. Yeah. 
so so you destroy the planet that's the end of that you know it's like so can't do what we're doing you know like i mean this is how easy this stuff is i mean as soon, as soon as you just do the math and you just go oh well that isn't gonna work and you know we can all live on you know uh, an entirely different diet if we just all work together i mean it's not a big deal we'll be extremely healthy we don't need any hospitals or any except for maybe an accident you know but mm -hmm. no kind of weird drugs or anything like that right anyway it's all really simple i mean you know come on <laughs> it is okay so we're gonna switch sorry to i jumped all over there clear back from the religion question but let's see we we did get out there kind of we did present a religion see so now you kind of see like what what's kirk what does kirk believe in now that he doesn't believe in organization well you just heard all the stuff i believe in yes beautiful and so i know okay so it's interesting because you have the past of being in mainstream you know business and building construction things of that nature you've had more of the main and that's why i had to get out of that building thing it, re it really is not sustainable and i really got into sustainable like buildings and we can really do those better too so we can do every part of our lives better than we're doing but there's no support for it no you know laws against it literally and this special interests everywhere it's like holy crap with armies to make you do what they say so it's like wow this is a tough planet man it is tough. <laughs> so, okay so i do want to switch um subjects right now okay. just because I, I want to touch on this and then we can get into other stuff too but now about 10 years ago you met your hybrid children yeah. And I, I would love to know, and I think the audience would love to know what led up to that experience and how did you experience that happening? Okay. Well, I'm just going to re retract just a little bit. So, you know, when I did get out of the, uh, out of the organized religion, then I started reading the spiritual books that were available. I mean, at the time it was like Course in Miracles was out. I don't know if you've heard of that, but you know, there was some other channel material like the, the Seth material. And uh, then there was like, you know, some of the early authors, which like, you know, Abraham Hicks, you know, with a lot of, or the uh, a lot of attraction. And then the, um, especially like Eckhart Tolle, what a gem, you know, this guy, you know, conscious and present, you know, the power of now, you know. So I'm reading these things. Plus, you know, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm watching all these nature shows, like, you know, just things about like the stars and how they formed and planets. And then, you know, and then we'll watch animal shows, like, you know, how the animals got together and how trees grow and stuff. As soon as you watch all this, you go, I mean, the more I watch it, I just go, look, it's all God. I mean, this is God expressed in, in just nature, just in stars, just in everything that I could see. So it was everywhere. So I just really, you know, believed in all of that stuff as though that is kind of the way in the path. And so then um, I, started to uh so i was really open and just inquisitive about like learning at everything that was higher conscious kind of thing and and then well kind of 9 11 happened and and then i started watching the videos and so the internet was available at that point not just books and so i started watching all these videos kind of about 9 11 because i want to see like what the truth of that was and of course that's a rabbit hole like oh my gosh you go down that and you just see the whole thing was just kind of a whole you know like inside job i mean yeah uh, a building just implodes itself like on the spot you know yeah. building number seven like forget the two trade towers we just have a you know 107 hole on this Bam, right you know it's like okay well we're done with that we don't need to I, i'm not that stupid i could i could see yeah. you know and then every architect and engineer that you know was even like around said no that didn't just happen that doesn't have just happen. I, i'm a builder myself i build buildings and you build them so that that doesn't happen you know right i mean they can twist they can turn they can maybe have a little thing happen but they don't like implode on themselves <laughs> without some help anyway um but when i was watching that what happened is is there were little uh you know uh, videos always suggested to me about extraterrestrials and actually being abduct abducted and so this whole abduction thing started to like you know come across my path and you know i was very interested in that and i don't know if you can even google it anymore and get anything because it's all suppressed now but back in those days you could get a lot of content about abductions mm. and so i was watching all those videos and started realizing that the abduction thing was huge it wasn't just a couple of people you're talking millions of people i yeah. mean these were the actual university researchers establishing these numbers and like i was going wow this et thing has got to be real i mean 
And they're just like those little guys in the back of you, the, the little grays, you know? Yeah. And so I started getting into that. And then, um, and I was also into the higher conscious stuff. And so then I started to listen to Bashar and then Bashar was like saying that he was, you know, uh, kind of a product of the abduction program. And I'm like, that's amazing, you know? And so then he's going, well, and we created these uh, hybrid kids mm -hmm. um, out of the abduction program and we live on spacecraft. And, uh, you know, I'm like, wow, this is amazing stuff. And, but, it, but it all made sense. It did, it, it did make sense because, you know, I felt the abduction thing was real and you could see that the research showed that it was real. And, and Bashar even said that they were the ones that flew the uh, Phoenix lights. Did you ever learn about that? Yeah, 1997. Phoenix line. Yeah, 97 yeah. Moment. And I mean, this mile wide craft, a few hundred feet off the ground, flew across, you know, half of Arizona. Right. And millions of people saw it. Or not millions, but thousands, oh. tens of thousands. Right. And it was in the news and everything. And they had the courts just deny it. But everyone knew what they saw. It still hasn't been debunked or anything. It's the truth. And even the governor came back out and said, I'm sorry for, you know, yeah. putting it down. But the point is, is is that hey he's going well, like that's our craft you know that's we we we're real like we're we're the real thing, and so anyway I started looking into this whole like hybrid kid thing and and wondering if I had them and then started to get like feelings of like of, of hybrid kids that were around and that were mine, and I was wondering if I had been part of it and then, Dolores Cannon you know she was the big researcher yeah. you know and I'm like I want to go to her and see if I've been abducted because I started feeling like maybe I have you know I was perfect specimen during that time. Yeah, and uh, so she wasn't available because kind of at the end of her days. But there was another one in LA. I forgot. Did I tell you her name? I can't can't remember what her name was. Anyway, she was kind of a student of Dolores, and she did the same kind of uh, regression, right? Hypnotic regression. And so I went and did that. And sure enough, you know, after enough effort, my mind didn't want to really give in that that easily. But it took me like an hour to get into it. But <laughs> finally, like I dropped down in and and remembered a whole abduction, like thing that went on and it was very real and i'm like wow i really did get abducted and it wasn't just the one time it was dozens of times yes and so i knew that i'd been being taken from like my early 20s all the way through kind of for maybe seven ten years or something until mm -hmm. they kind of stopped doing it but i had a lot of <laughs> a lot of experience I, I, and I didn't even know about it. When I was in LA, it was really interesting. I went to this little abduction party or like people have been abducted. And the guy there, he says, I'm kind of an expert. I go, what's your deal? He says, I'm an expert on like finding implants. And I'm going, I wonder if I have any. He goes, oh, you probably do. Let me check you. You know, and he gets out actually a, a, a stud finder. Like he would find studs in the wall, you know, yeah. for the nails. Right. And it had a little kind of magnetic thing on it to like, to, you know, check for magnetic things. Because let me just put this on your head, you know, because you know, there's nothing magnetic in your head. It's just like flesh and bones, right? But anyway, so he puts it on and he kind of starts going around and goes, beep, 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 beep. And there's all these implants, you know, around me. And I'm like going, oh, I can't even believe this, you know? And of course, there was lots of videos about the implants and all the implants they put in people. And I watched those and I go, ah. I don't have those and it's like no you got them dude you know you they filled you up <laughs> and so i was like oh crap i'm just totally a part of this i did not want to be a part of it but i just really was but that's kind of it and that's it. so anyway i did end up uh you know really communicating with my hybrid kids and then you know that led to the story that the, par par the place where you said about media yeah well so okay real quick let's for those who don't know who Bashar is, Bashar is a channeled entity who mostly speaks through Daryl Anka. And um, he, Bashar is um, part of the Yael, correct? Yes. Um, he would be, he would, no, he would be the, uh, Yael is the first group, which with the hybrid kids would be a part of. He's the, uh, the third group, which is the uh, Esasani. Esasani. Okay. Okay. So, just for because our viewers, some of them may be like, "Who's Bashar?" <laughs> so just just so that that information is clear. And Bashar, um, there are a few other channels that occasionally Bashar will speak through, but Daryl Anka is the primary one. And there's a lot of material out there. Um, I know on, even on Amazon they have movies that Daryl has made with that. So um, now, when you said that you didn't necessarily feel like you signed up to be a part of that abduction or hybridization program. 
Um, there are a lot of people I know that do feel that way. But what I understand at a soul level is that whoever has those experiences, they did sign up for it at a soul contract level. Yeah, that's what Bashar says. And, and then and it, to confirmation to that is, is that ultimately, I mean, nothing can happen to you that isn't your choice. Right. So, free will. It, 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 yeah. If you come here and it feels like that you're a victim of a bunch of stuff, but you choose to come here and be a victim of a bunch of stuff. So like, or you wouldn't have even come in and incarnated into the, you know. Yeah. And um, why I am bringing that up is I just watched a movie, I think it was yesterday on Amazon Prime called Extraordinary Seeding. And this is actually all about the hybrid program, but the people that are that are in the show are in in a really fear based place and not necessarily understanding from that higher perspective of the soul contract. And so they are all, they are all there saying we didn't sign up for this, we didn't sign up for this. And as you're, we're born as human, we forget what we sign up for, like why we chose our parents and why we have certain experiences that we came in to learn. And so, you know, not to dismiss anyone's experience of that fear or that feeling victimized. Um, I don't want to do that. But when you look at it from a higher perspective and when people have been regressed to a much deeper state of getting really into their subconscious mind, deep, deep, that's when they understand. And I, and that's one of the things that I love about Dolores Cannon's work is she gets people super deep into that subconscious mind where they can pull up the, that information. And that's what I'm working on with my clients as well, where one of the, um, there's a famous regressionist that was on that movie, Barbara Lamb. And she did mine. Pardon? Barbara did mine. Okay. So Barbara. Okay. So, she was she was being interviewed on this movie and she she was like yeah these people like it's scary it's you know these people are in fear and she doesn't take them past the fear and so anyway i just i want to throw that out there not to be necessarily controversial or dismissive to people who might feel that way but i do want to put out an alternative idea that okay if you look at it if you really look at these contracts and well, like you said I, it can be done against your will. I, you know, yeah. So my two bits on that point is mm -hmm. I, I'm going to just back up a little bit and just go to before you incarnate into a life, you're, you know, an energetic being at that point and you, you have objectives when you come in, to the incarnation and you literally have an agenda you lay out what you want to achieve in the agenda and you yeah. know there at that point mm -hmm. you know what are the certain kind of activities or events or you know things that happen to you that will cause you to learn and grow and so you literally then pick some events that could happen that would cause you to have to like overcome them yes and so from this perspective once you're in it you're going i didn't sign up for it but right. before you came, you definitely signed up for it or yeah. it wouldn't have happened. You wouldn't have done it. You were not thrown into that. And the thing that the way that you can confirm this is that everyone that like is in a victimized situation, which is almost every human. I mean, especially ones that are born with, you know, mal, you know, where they're deformed or something, okay. you know, they've got something wrong with them. You go, well, that's a victim. They, they didn't sign up for that. They go, yeah, they did. You, you signed up to come into a life where you didn't have everything. I did some other uh, uh, past life work with another clairvoyant person. And she started like, going on some past, past lives that I had. And I, I was born as a, in one of them as a, a black slave during, you know, before the you know Civil War. Okay. And the mom and dad were taken from me. I only had like my, my sister and I was a little girl and I couldn't talk. I was not only like black and the slave, but couldn't even hardly talk. And she had to like be my friend. Kirk, you know, I could say you didn't sign up for that. It's like, yeah, I did. I, I needed to live that life of absolute not being able to talk, not being able to communicate, having everything against me and seeing what I would do, you know? Yeah. So it's like this again, this is back to what we we're talking about before the show, which was 
this is really just like a simulation, like a video game, like a like a movie set, like a, a play or something where we're coming into it, playing out some things, learning, growing, going back, integrating it, coming in again. And this is how we evolve our soul. Absolutely. Well, and that's the thing is, um, so you have done some past life work and I, I'm a past life regression therapist. And I mean, so I have experienced my lives, uh, not all of them, obviously, because they're infinite <laughs> because, and, and when we're talking past, you know, I just want to also put out there that my understanding and experience is that there is no past, there is no future. All timelines exist simultaneously. So everything's parallel. Yeah. reality which is how we can tap into it as well and we yeah. can make changes when we're in that quantum state and so we have the ability to experience that black slave life or you know i know you've had other interesting lives you've experienced yeah. but the, so this life of of kirk who has these hybrid children yeah. right so and i i know of some of my lives living on other planets or other star systems and so that um, when when you start experiencing those kinds of different realities, I think your your world expands exponentially, right? Yeah. And that you you can see things from that higher perspective. You can get out of victimization and realize, okay, you do you actually have choice all the time. You can create your reality. Well, and and, and that's the truth. To a certain extent, you know, the, the, the question of free will, you know, in this life, um, you're free to an extent. Because um, it's kind of like, you know, there's some outer edge boundaries. It's like playing chess and you got to stay on the board. It's like there is a playing board for this life and you got to stay on it. If you get outside of that, then basically you'll die. It won't be a part of the game. And it just, yeah, it, it, there is a, there's some limitations about what can happen, but you're free inside of those limitations to play the game that we're yep. intended to play. Right. <laughs> for this life. For this life, right? Yeah. There's a bunch of other game boards out there that we can have other lives and be in an entirely different game. You know, it's kind of like a go to an arcade. There's a lot of different kind of video games and that's what we're in is a kind of a one video game inside the arcade of a lot of video games. Right. So, okay, let's get back to being regressed and meeting your hybrid children and what that experience was like. Okay, so, yeah, so I was uh, um, feeling like the, the hybrid kids were around me. I could kind of hear them and sense them and stuff. And I'm like, this is really interesting because I was really opening up to that whole thing. Uh, one day I was uh, going for a walk and I felt something slip into my hand and I felt like a hand was holding my hand. I look and there's nothing there, but it was like I was holding the hand of a little child and I got this like, you know, kind of voice in my head like, hey, I'm here with you. Uh, I, you know, you can't see me, but I am like going on this hike with you. I thought I'd just come down and say hi. I'm like, this is wild. This is incredible. You know, and it's like, you know, and then there was another one that appeared for, uh, like uh, on the other hand and one like another one. I'm like, and like. You put me on your shoulders and I go, yeah, I can't even see you. And it's like, no, no, it's like I'm walking with these illusory kids and people would go, you're just crazy, Kirk. You know, you just like, you know, you're making this stuff up. I didn't make that stuff up. I didn't like try to dream that up. It was just, yeah. it was something that happened that, you know, was really rare. So anyway, uh, this kept happening and um, I, uh, was at the time transitioning from living in LA and I was wondering where to live at that point. And so I was visiting different places. And so we'd gone to visit like Mount Shasta, looking at that place and looking at possibly Sedona and been traveling a lot. And then uh, I left LA and then I went to Hawaii, uh, to Maui, uh, close to you. And um, so I had arrived that night and um, went and stayed with uh, some friends that were off of this out into the kind of the jungles and they had a place that was really quiet and no light and so that when i went to sleep um bridget came with me she was uh, uh my daughter she's my daughter and we were both traveling at the time and uh, so we're sleeping in this room and it's super dark super quiet in the jungles and so then in the middle of the night i woke up and um 
I'm like sitting in the room and I go, okay, I can see I'm in kind of a really dark room. And I was trying to think like, now where am I? Because I traveled so much, like I'm in Sedona, am I in like Shasta, I'm in Hawaii, where am I? You know, I'm like, cause I couldn't quite remember cause I'd been dreaming and so forth, but I had woke up and was trying to like get myself situated. Mm -hmm. And right then all of a sudden I was just bam in another room. Now this is from a being awake not in the middle of a dream I because I was awake when this happened and right. I like was sitting in another room that was completely light and right in front of me was this little girl on a couch and um she's just looking at me and I'm going holy crap this is the cutest little girl ever you know I mean just just it was so amazing and and, then, and she was like had a straight face and I said I know you you're Cynthia my hybrid daughter and somehow I just knew, and um, she just got this big smile and jumped up and ran over and hugged me. And I'm like feeling her, and I'm going, I can feel you. And I, it was so weird to me because I knew that I wasn't, you know, on earth or wherever, but I was still me. And I didn't know how any of this was happening, but it was happening, and I was physically able to touch her. And um, so we hugged this up, and, and everything that we communicated was telepathic, which was really fun to communicate telepathically. Yes. Because yeah. you didn't have to like use your hip mouth or words because they're so slow. And, and these little kids were so bright and so want to talk so much that it would work out way better to do it telepathically. Anyway, so then there was two little kids sitting next to her, so two little girls. And then I said, I know you too. You're my hybrid kid. So I gave her a hug and the other one. And then I kind of like started to get my, you know, uh, bearings and looked around and there was about 30 hybrid kids in the room. Wow. Anywhere from about seven years old to 18 years old, 16, 17 years okay. old somewhere in there and uh i said you know i telepathically would think like and it was really interesting they would all be very quiet telepathically and i could tell that they didn't want to be they they were uh guided like don't you know talk to kirk unless you're spoken to you know wait for him to ask you questions and so i mean i i thought to myself you know are all you kids my hybrid kids and the answer comes out yes you know and it's like oh wow this is just so amazing so i got to kind of meet them all and uh, they're all different colors and different sizes. When I say colors, I mean every race, like, okay, you know, white, Hispanic, uh, black, yeah. Asian, just e everything and different sizes and shapes. And I'm like, how am I all, you know, it related to you. And you just, they said telepathically, well, you know, we have different amounts of DNA in us that, uh, that is yours. So, you know, some of us, maybe a few percentage points all the way to maybe 50 percentage points or something. So um, when they make a hybrid, they kind of mix and match and kind of make the best, you know, because they were good at genetics and they would leave, you know, certain amounts of the gray, you know, genetics in because all of them had some gray and then right. some had a lot of gray. Yeah. The group that I was meeting was part of the IEL, which is from Bashar's, you know, uh, um, point of view, they're going to be the group that comes down and meets uh, the humans. Okay. And, you know, the, he, he says the agenda for that to happen, you know, is, you know, in the next five, 10 years or whatever. I yeah. Know. Well, and as I understand, so Lisa Royal Holt, who she's one of the occasional channelers in Bashar, but she also has other, as another Zeta and other entities that she channels. And she says something similar. And so, yeah. So what, from your understanding, what is the point of these hybrid children? Because I, oh, yeah. So while I was there, you know, I, I asked him why they took me, you know, to, to see them and they said, well, the reason we took you is you'd been doing so much work and you're just doing so great on your own personal work. They said, it was kind of like just throwing you a bone, just like to let you know that, look, we are real yeah. and we are, you know, uh, alive and coming and all the things that you have like imagined is actually true. And we wanted to give you a real experience yeah. of it being true for you so that you don't just have to like go, well, I think so, you know. And this was something that you could touch and feel. And so that was one of their points. And the other point was, is that from their perspective, they don't, they said, you know, one of our messages is, is we don't care how, what, how much percentage you're our dad or not 1% or 50% or whatever. It matters not to us. What really matters is, is that um, we think of, you know, the human race as our fathers and mothers, because mm -hmm. we all come from them and we're really grateful and we love you all uh um equally no matter how much percentage of dna that you have in us and we're so excited to join with you when you know the appropriate time comes which is when you're ready for us because we're ready for you and um they didn't say this but one point that i did want to throw in there is like a lot of questions is, is well won't they just be growing up by the time we're you know ready and 
they're on a different timeline than us. And so, right. and in fact, you know, Bashar talks about them going 10 times faster than us, the Essasani race, and that like the, was it the Syrian race is uh, moving at a hundred times faster than us, which was interesting. And, but in any way, the point is, is that it, it, it might only be, you know, a few months or years or whatever passed for them and it might be 20 for us. And uh, so it's no big deal. They'll still be little and it'll still all work, even right. though it's going to take a while for yeah. us. Yeah. Well, and that's, I think, um, what <laughs> we as humanity have to do some major mind shifting in terms of accepting more diversity if we're going to be yeah. ready for them and their maybe slightly different appearance to be here with us for, for humanity to accept them. Well, and the, the way that, the, you know, it's looking like the majority of humanity isn't going to make that timeline. They're, to, they're going to be separated off on another timeline um, because I got to tell you, the vibration of these kids, and this was like the closest vibration to us that they could manufacture. This wasn't even the high end, you know, yeah. fifth group of, of the uh, hybrid program. Because Bashar is saying like there's five groups in the IEL groups, the group number one, the one that's going to make first contact. Okay. And then, you know, Essasani, which is the third group, which is Bashar's group, you know, they're even more advanced. And then there was a group even at five, which is even the more and more advanced. And they're just going to start with these ones. They're the first group. And just, I got to tell you, being around them, the amount of energy, like you can, you could not hold a negative thought if you stood in their presence. The, the negative thought would just kind of almost be like fried out of there because there's yeah. so much love and so much light. You couldn't believe in war standing next to them. It couldn't happen. There's just too much love. I know that sounds weird, but. That's how I felt, especially for days after. I just, yeah, I, I couldn't think of a negative thing. I couldn't imagine a negative thing after being with them. Yeah, it just, that's how bright and light they are. So if they ever do get here, you know, I mean, when they do get here, whatever, um, for the people that are like going to be around them, I mean, you can't have any doubts, any negative ideas. You haven't had to do your personal work, or you're just going to get fried. Makes total sense. And that's why I mean, psychic shock, because all everything you believe actually just gets um, dissolved. Mm -hmm. You go, well, none of that's true. And what's true is this other thing. So you got to start believing the other true things in order to actually like be ready for like a more advanced being. And these, and these were just the closest beings to us that you could get, but kind of the least advanced. Imagine needing really advanced beings. Right. You know, they have to tune themselves down and that's why they can only stay for a very, very short time. They can't stay that low in terms of vibration. Exactly. And I, yeah, I teach classes about that and, and I, I love having your personal experience with that as well because when I, um, when I got to experience my Arcturian group for the first time, you know, again, they're a pure love. Like that's when you get to fifth dimension and above, it's just everything is love. There is yeah. no more polarity. Well, and fourth, fourth, fourth uh, density, which would be like fifth dimension, right. is the dimension of love, which uh, when we say love, we're talking unconditional love, because love isn't love unless it's unconditional. That, uh, that other thing is some hormone or something. It's not, not, not the kind that we're talking about. So yeah, unconditional love, where it's like, I, I love you. And I, I want, I want the best for you really is what that is. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the more that we can start living from that place right now, here in yeah. our reality, then the more that that we do learn to raise our vibration, we are in a higher vibration where there can be communication and more. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the, and the trick to it is to, like now, there's a lot of forces that appear to be outside of us that aren't loving that are trying to control and manipulate us. So the trick is to love that. Yeah. Because if you judge it or you hate it or you despise it or any of those things, every one of those kind of feelings that you have about it are your own feelings. And that's not love. So your job is to really stay in the love vibration. So when I said that the little kids couldn't like vibrate the other way, they couldn't. Mm -hmm. And that's why you couldn't be standing in their present. And so really you're kind of becoming like them 
on this planet during this odd time where you can't really even see them. You know, you, you listen to the, the leaders talk this gibberish and you go, I, Mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't pick up that vibration. It does, it's too low of a vibration and I'm not, I'm not sitting around saying something's wrong with it because then I would have to actually vibrate at that vibration to even like know what they're even like up, up to. I mean, yeah. And so you, you, you literally have to like, and yeah, at some point you have to start not tuning into it because if <laughs> you keep tuning into it, you'll keep being the vibration. Mm-hmm. You just get to the point where you like you don't even know that it's there in a way, and 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 basically what you're doing is shifting yourself to another timeline when you're doing that. So that's the work, and that's when I say they won't be here because yeah. you just literally will shift, and somehow all of that will disappear, and somehow there will just be who's ever left because that's what's being forced on us right now. That's what's happening. Yeah, I agree. The shift, the it separation. Is. It is, and. The more, I mean, that's one thing that I am so excited about living here in Hawaii, away from my old paradigm, my old life, because here I'm in my happy love bubble and I don't watch the news. Now, my husband, he still watches the news and occasionally he'll talk at me, but I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to hear it. Well, and it's that, interesting because you were in your job and you just couldn't even be there anymore. You had to literally make a shift because why? Your vibration was to the point where you couldn't do that anymore. You just it no, didn't match. I, couldn't. No. And I mean, like, I get to fully show up in who I am here. I There's no more masks. And, you know, people, either they love me or they're like, she's crazy. And if they think I'm crazy, that's fine. Because <laughs> I tried my whole life not to be crazy because of my whole life experiencing. Well, that whole crazy thing is so silly to me. I mean, I had to get over that way, you know, clear back when I left the Mormon thing, because they said, you're crazy. And I'm like, yeah. no, I think it's actually the opposite, but I'm not going to call you crazy. You're just like making that choice and I'm making this choice. Crazy is like a word that just, no, it's just a different perspective and everyone gets this free to choose their own perspective. And I have mine and that's the way that it is. Yes. And I, it's beautiful um, that we all, yes, get to have these different experiences. And well, wouldn't it be great if everyone supported everyone else in their perspective? Absolutely, it would. Oh, you have that perspective? How interesting is that? Why do you have that perspective? Tell me how you concluded that. What like life experiences did you have to like come to that conclusion? Did you have some traumas or something? Or did you have some major great things happen to you? Why? Maybe I could learn from you. Yes. What a, what a beautiful way to like interact. Well, it would, and and it would get us out of our judgment, thinking that judgment we... is the the killer. It's the death knell to everything. Judgment. No, and we're talking negative judgment, not judgment of like being discerning. Correct. Discerning the facts is yeah. not judgment. It, it, they use the word judgment because that word actually is that, but that's a way way different than judgment with condemnation. Absolutely. Well, and because people they get. They get very self-righteous thinking that they do know everything. And That's judgment with condemnation. Yes, it is. And so anyway, it's just it's being able to be in an atmosphere where I'm able to like call in my tribe. And not that I, I don't need everyone to believe the same way that I do, but I do the people in my world, I want them to come from a place of love. And I want them to do their best not to be in that judgment. Well, and so what you're actually doing is you utilizing the law of attraction the way it's meant to be used, which is if you vibrate, you know, this higher mm -hmm. vibration, then it's going to attract to you other higher vibrations. Yes. Now, the thing that doesn't get talked about very much is at the same moment, you're going to also repel yes. or push away from you things that are lower vibrations. Absolutely. So those people that aren't that vibration are going to naturally not want to be around you. And the people that are, are going to naturally start coming to you because yeah. you're vibrating that way. Yes. And that is the actual law of attraction. It is. And um, so my um, my spiritual schooling um, was part of the Ramtha School of Enlightenment. And that's one of the things that Ramtha taught was being frequency specific, which is exactly that. And so you are only the things in your world are frequency specific to what you're vibrating at. Exactly. And the key, the key to that is, is that the, the actual frequency starts with your thoughts. 
Mm-hmm. It does. So it's your thoughts. It doesn't matter. I mean, that, that the thoughts are the, the beginning of it. Your actions come from your thoughts. So all the work has to be done inside your own head. Yes. It's not outside. You can't think it and then behave differently and think that you've done something. The frequency is coming from your thoughts. Yes. So if you're saying I'm loving and you go, I love you, but in your head you're going, you're kind of a dick and I don't really like you. <laughs> they actually yeah. get the message, you're kind of a dick and I don't really like you, but he just said the words that were opposite of that, but none of them made you know any sense because it contradicted each other. Yeah. Well, and that's, um, I think, one of the, the things that stifles our communication as humans is that so we, we do use these words, but if we could speak telepathically or people could tune in to what people are actually thinking, how, yeah, then we you would- You would be thinking all those bad thoughts, right? You'd be like, okay, gotta watch my thoughts, you know, because they can read my thoughts. I gotta be careful here. Yes. So, yes. And, and that's the way I actually operate. So when I, you know, move about in my life, it's what I'm thinking that matters. And see, in the normal, you know, in this, outside world, they're going, well, what you say and what you do matters. I go, no, 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 what you think matters because it's what you think that comes, it is it manifests into, you know, physical reality and that's how everything gets done. So thinking, yeah. thinking, thinking matters. So if you have any thoughts of harming or being unfair to other people, then that really matters because that's going to start getting manifest. Yeah. When along those lines, one of the other principles that, that we learned at the school was consciousness plus energy creates the nature of reality. And so it is. It's the conscious thoughts plus the energy behind that that's going to manifest your reality. And so, and also, um, are you familiar with Dr. Bruce Lipton's work? I heard of him, but I never read. Okay. So he... His original layperson book was called The Biology of Belief, and he was a cell biologist at Stanford. He is the father or grandfather of epigenetics. And so what I love about his research is showing that your thoughts create the environment that your cells then are, their receptors are open to the chemicals that are going to come in to um, replicate the DNA. So if your thoughts... Wow, interesting, right? in a like fear-based or kind of negative environment, then you're gonna create disease that way because that's what you're expressing. But if your thoughts, even you may have like a hereditary um, genetic predisposition to some illness, but if your thoughts are not creating that replication of the DNA, that disease will not appear. Boy, that's just awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> What if they had that on TV every day and that people practice that every day and they had like videos running every day about how like the think positive thoughts and love everyone and work together and then all of your like health problems will be healed. What if that were the presented thing rather than let me inject you with some disease ridden poison, you know, I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. Well, and this is stuff that he was talking about in the late nineties. Um, his research, he started back in the sixties, but, um, I was I was a professor um, teaching his work. It, it was still very fringe science, and it wasn't in the textbooks. And my students, my biology students, were like, "This is crazy. This isn't real. This isn't in our textbook." And I'm like, "You wait 25, 30 years, and it will be more mainstream. It will be more accepted." And finally, epigenetics is finally in the universities wow. being taught and studied, like at, at the mainstream level more mainstream but it's still you were a trailblazer even back then yeah <laughs> but it still hasn't necessarily made its way into western medicine and western medicine for sure has its place but yeah if everyone like grew up knowing the power of our minds and what we could do with our bodies our bodies are magical things. They can heal themselves. And I have a lot of friends who have healed themselves from different illnesses. You know, it's so interesting. I'm listening to you and I'm just thinking, you know, if you sit around listening to anything in the mainstream, you're going to get tripped up so badly. You just, your progress will be so slow and man, you really don't stand a chance. So you really do have to just go with what your inspired to go with what you're guided to go with and and then just turn off and this idea that 
that some this other thing's true or that because it's a group of people or scientists is true or because you know whoever said it what you just got to dismiss that and just go with what you feel inside of yourself and yeah. and you got to you got to be really courageously dedicated to that because there's going to be a lot of you know resistance so you just go now but this is the way that it is yeah and really dedicate yourself to what to to what your own self is guided to yes to say but i'm guided here I, you may say all this stuff but i'm like not it doesn't resonate with me and you got to go with what resonates with you and be careful about not something that's in your head but something that's in your soul which is very different exactly and that stuff in your head all got put there by those other people that you want to get out of you got to clean your head out it's just this that's what we were talking about earlier is i try not to have a brain because it's just full of junk that i have to clean out i, I just try to like get the stuff directly you know in the moment you know in the present moment yes and that's something that i have had to decondition myself with is you know what society thinks and what my family my friends think about things and really tune in to my inner knowingness we all have that ability we just need to know what it how it shows up for us because everyone's a little bit different and how it's going to show up but, right, right. but we we're all telepathic yeah we are i mean in other words the gear is built into us to be that way it is. you can say that you're not and then for sure it won't work but like if you just say yeah no i am and it will work then it can work really well I'm very telepathic with all the people that I'm around. I go, by the way, I'm going to like be communicating with you telepathically. I tell them flat out. And they're like, what? I go, yeah, I'll just, just be prepared. You'll get messages from me every now and then you'll know what I'm doing and so on and so forth. And they're like, wow, I never had anybody be like that to me. And I go, well, that's kind of how I am. So that's just what you're going to have to get used to. Yeah. I just taught a class recently where we talked about that and um, there was some interest in people developing that skill a little more and, <laughs> i mean and, well and some of my friends the couple of them might be watching they're animal communicators and the beauty of animal communication is it is telepathy well all the animals communicate that way because they don't have voices yeah well they can bark or something or make you know some yeah. noise with their mouth but like they they telepathically communicate they do and so i think just even as a practice the more that if you have a pet, just tuning in and, and really communicating mind to mind, consciousness to consciousness, heart to heart, um, that you can start practicing that. Of course, and, yeah. And then, the pet, you know, you can just think like I'm heading back from the store and the pet just runs to the door 15 minutes before you get there because it just knows that you're yeah. heading home. It yeah. knows, it's telepathic. There's no space and time, really. I mean, this is yeah. made up stuff, so. It is, we're all connected. And like you said, yeah, there really is no time or space <laughs> which a lot of people are like well yes there is and i'm getting older well there there is in the sense that we believe in it and you know adhere to it for our video game experience here but uh, in reality we can override that yes to a certain extent uh, yes we can i haven't been able to turn back time on my aging body like if you could have a little like you know uh something for that that would be helpful but um there i do well my husband, he says that I'm getting younger and younger every day. I mean, <laughs> which... Well, the I, more that you're in the now moment, the less that you age. So in other yeah. words, everyone will be aging, you know, outside of you, but you won't age if you live in the present moment. So yeah. if you... And to live in the present moment means that you're not thinking about time passing. You're actually in your joy or in your passion mm -hmm. and as long as you're there. So this whole hour that we're talking, no yeah. time's passed. No. So See, what is... What is your joy? What is your passion? What lights you up? This. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and all the things that we've talked about, though, I would be very, very, I'm very passionate about living sustainably, mm -hmm. living in harmony. The name of my web website is harmoniousearth.org. You know, so it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm into that, into loving unconditionally. So those, you know, uh, living, living like, following your joy your passion your excitement um and then you know supporting everybody else and following theirs and doing what's in best interest of yourself and the group you know those things that i've said those are and and these are just this is just the stuff that jesus said it is and and lots of the other well, and any of the great teachers in the end it all boils down to this stuff so why the heck do we need to have a bunch of like you know sliced and diced you know black and white lines that everybody throws out I and mean, we just don't need all that stuff you know i mean 
we're just part of the same one thing. So I don't see what the big deal is. Right. Well, and on those lines, so you help your daughter, Bridget, run retreats in Sedona, correct? Mm-hmm. I know your next one is full, but you said one of your goals was to have retreats all the time. So yeah, you know, we've been having them. Like I had some, she had some, you know, over the last several years. And and I call mine adventures because I like to like be out and active and so forth. So I'd have them in Hawaii and Mexico and, um, you know, had them at Shasta and Sedona and Maui and, you know, all these different places that are kind of more high energy type places. Um, but uh, the main thing that, that I've realized is, is that bringing people together into mm-hmm. groups, the opposite of what they're telling you to do now on the mainstream yeah. is the key. So being together, you know, uh, with face to face to other people, not on devices. This is kind of okay because you can pick up our vibration through these devices. So you can get some, but when you're standing next to a person, then, then it's a lot clearer transmission. It is. And, and so the whole goal is, is to not have any interference between the transmissions. So even our bodies create interference, but like when we're standing right together, it's the least amount. But then when you put a computer screen, you know, so then we have our bodies and then the computer screen, the more interference we get, you know, the less that we can kind of transmit anyway. So, but if you can get a group of people together um, and then actually hold uh, the vibrational space where it's a high vibe space, where it's unconditional love and, 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 and support for their excitement. Like these are su- super basic concepts, but if they get in that space and they're in it for several days in a row, a week or something, it literally transforms them because then they have like a, a taste of what it could be like. And maybe in their life, no other time and no other way has a group of people supported them like that or where they felt supported like that, or they felt that vibration for that long of a constant time. And so that's what I want to do is just be able to bring people together like that. And basically they just feed off each other and myself and we just have a great time and eat healthy food and go, you know, on like amazing hikes and adventures and and then talk about like interesting subjects like this. And by the time they're done, they're just completely like, okay, I can't even do my old life anymore. And this is in five days. (laughs) Well, and on that, so you leave retreats and I want to, promote that and I also I have a week long retreat coming up next month. Yay. I do. It's a yeah, week long retreat and I'm all about adventure too. So I call it a spiritual eco adventure. Oh, I love it. Not only um do I help people like do deep dive healing if they have blockages, but I want them to start really trusting that inner knowingness that we were talking about and have fun in the in the time because When you get out of your, you know, any kind of retreat or conference or experience that you go where you pull yourself out of your normal life, you have the opportunity to make shifts that when you go back home, then if you don't fall back into the same patterns, you can really have a beautiful new life moving forward. It's true. And and, and you will fall back into the same patterns, but maybe not as far as you did before. So that's why if you keep doing these things, you're, you're making progress. Yeah. So um, you've written a couple books or a few books. Three. Three books. So well, kind of four because there's a fourth one on my website that okay. is kind of like an ebook. Do you want to just share what those are about? Well, those, those you know, uh, was in 2010, so about 12 years ago. And they were like uh, my uh, version or, or it was like channeled material because I when I wrote them, I just would – just okay. automatic, right? I was doing automatic writing. And at the time, this was kind of newer to me at that time. So I had to do it that way rather than just sit down and, and write because it wasn't as believing in all of that at the time. But these were really good books and it was really good material. And it's basically the same material that I'm talking about now. And the, the three books, one of them is on um, uh, its name, Who Am I? Okay. You gotta know who you are. Like, isn't that the, 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 the big question is, is what it was, it was Shakespeare that said, or was it? Um, know thyself. Know thyself, but I think it was way before Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you know, I mean, this is the point. There's like all the great philosophers, is like you got to know yourself, you know. Yourself. And uh, I think this is one of the biggest pieces of missing material that there is: is people do not know who they are. They think that they're this actual like human person, and they are so much more. So, yeah. so much more. That's a whole other video thing I won't go into, but that's another <laughs> one we could. 
And so who, who am I? And then, uh, and then one on relationships and another book on like wealth or money. So, okay. um, well, and you know a little bit about that money and wealth. I do know a lot about money and wealth. You know, I've been there, uh, had all the money and then lost all the money, had all the money and lost all the money. So I've been an up and down and like really have a good, uh, grasp on that. And I have my two bits about like the way I look at that and we could do a whole thing on money, which would be yeah. interesting. Yeah. And then, and then relationships, come on, man, who isn't interested in that? I mean, it's just so amazing. Right. Right. So, okay. So from your experiences, what could a person do to go deeper into their spiritual awakening? Well, I mean, first thing is, is you got to like uh, calm the mind or, or, or stop the chatter inside of it, which takes meditation. So, um, you know, you can do this practice on your own and there's other great uh, things you could do to assist that. Like uh, Vipassana, have you ever heard of Vipassana? It was a, a thing where the, uh, uh, this guy put together this deal where you go for 10 days and you don't um, talk to anybody, but you'd like do it as a group. And basically you just meditate all day, like, you know, so two hours on a half hour break, two hours and then two hour break and then two hours. I mean, you just meditate and meditate and meditate. And when you're yeah. sitting there for 10 days straight, folded, you know, leg, cross legs sitting there, my goodness, your mind starts going crazy for the first few days, but pretty soon it just stops. Cause it just runs out and then you can actually get a hold of yourself and start hearing, you know, the guidance coming in of who you really are. So calm the mind is, is the important thing. And then the uh, other thing would be to then follow your guidance. What, even when you can start hearing that and then, you know, from there you'll be, be, be led step by step. The, the desire is really important. Because there's going to be the obstacles are going to be so huge because the, you've got to dismantle the ego, and you know Eckhart Tolle is like a brilliant at dismantling the ego. So you just read his books and then you know do your meditations and you dismantle that ego, get it out of the way, and so that you can get present. And being present means that your mind isn't doing anything. Like you go to the grocery store and you literally like have to get out your list because you're so present you don't remember you know <laughs> what you need. I mean, it's like, or you just look at it. You know, so what's interesting is you can have the list, you can put it in there. And then when you go to the grocery store, you can just believe that the list is going to come back to you when it needs to. That's being present. That is. So anyway, you be present and you be present every day in your life as much as you can. And then that's really the trick of the game. I mean, there isn't really much more to that. Calm the mind, you know, get, get, get it cleaned out, put, oh, you need good tools. You got to put good belief systems in there. In other words, because if you don't have like the ones that I've been talking about, where it's like, you know, do what's in the best interest of yourself and of others and, sure. the, and the planet, yes. you know, unconditionally loving, you know, make, extending freedom to everybody. Yeah. These are like the, the really good tools. And you can know that you're on the right path if you're, you know, following those, those things. So excellent. That's okay. kind of it. I mean, you know, one, two, three, bam. It only takes a whole lifetime or several thousand to like accomplish it, but you know. <laughs> but there is no time, so. <laughs> there isn't. There's no like urgency on this thing. It's not like we're in a hurry for this. No. Everyone's on their own path and yeah, their own yeah, path. Yeah. Do, do what you feel. I mean, the whole thing is, is, well, what do you feel in this moment? And really that's what it always boils down to is in this moment, if you could just choose to just move a little bit, what would be that movement to the positive, not to the negative, but to the positive. And then you just keep moving in that direction and that's all you can do. Okay. So just share one more time how people can find you before we end here. Oh yeah. Um, uh, KirkNielsen.com. I have a little website for myself. I haven't really, you know, kept it up. At least you can find me. There's my phone number and email. And then um, HarmoniousEarth.org. Uh, and you know, that's, that had all of our retreats on there and a lot of all of these philosophies are there. And again, that these websites are aged, you know, cause they're like 10 years old and like, I, I feel like I'm an entirely new person and maybe go back through them and get them going again. But you can always, you know, at least find me and message me and we can be Facebook friends or whatever. And like, you know, plan on coming to some go events where we're together and kind of can learn and grow in these like beautiful ways. You know, I'm all about like in-person kind of stuff. So yeah. Well, I know some of our viewers live in Arizona. So, you know, if you're in the Sedona area, go go meet Kirk. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dial me up or whatever. Facebook me like, hey, Kirk, you know, I mean, I'm going to be in Sedona. Let's go for a hike. Yeah. 
Okay, well, we are now coming to an end in our time. I want to thank you so much for being here. And um, thank you. It was great to be with you. I mean, I totally enjoyed myself. Did you have fun? I, yes, I always have fun with these. Oh, I love it. That's I work so, so much, and it's just like for me, it lights me up, it fills me up to have deep conversations. So, yeah. Well, and you, and you know, you're on the right path when you're feeling that. Yeah, definitely. So thank you so much for being thank here. You. And thank you to all of you watching or watching the replay. And um, I will see you next time. And remember, the truth is inside you.